First of all, all praises to the Father Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakadash. Shabbat Shalom to all the brothers and sisters in recognition to observing this day for worshiping the Most High. Sundown this evening to sundown tomorrow evening, my people, let's get some rest, worship, and praises in like we was instructed to do in the Most High's book for his people, his children. It's very important that we do in these end times what he instructed us to do. Because, hey, look, time is running short and we can see the most high signs compassing about this earth like never ever before, okay? Now, of course, some of you know about April 8th which is just what next month about the eclipse now we've had eclipses before the last one was back in 2017 okay but this particular one is ramped up for some reason i think it's got a lot to do with prophecy if you understand what i'm saying if you look at this map right here i have next to the eclipse and the two letters in hebrew paleo paleo hebrew that is you will see that there's an x where it says ta which means end okay and ah which means beginning on the right okay that right there expresses chapter uh well revelation is chapter one verse eight and we're going to get to that that's going to be the first one we cover Okay. Well, guess what? That's over the United States. Those marks, that X right there has been marked over the United States. Basically, I believe this next eclipse will complete that particular mark right there, the beginning and the end. Okay. We are in the end times, people. There's no more time to be wasted. The Most High has given us the signs. And we're going to see even more signs as we go through this right here. And it's going to get deep, very, very deep. So my advice be to those of you that come across this particular video to repent. Repent simply means to have a change of heart, a change of mind. and turn away from your wicked ways. Whatever that you are doing that you feel convicted by from the Most High and He's looking and you know He sees you and you feel shamed of but you still do it because that's what you like to do, I would urge you to repent from those, stop doing it and to ask Yahawashai to come into your heart and cast off your worldly ways because if you don't, you will be destroyed with the rest of them that don't want to repent and with the devil and his demons. That's basically what this all boils down to. Now, what, without further ado, let's get into some scripture right here and see if we can make sense of this eclipse that we're going to have on April 8th. But first, starting in Revelations, verse 1 and 8, this is the Hamashiach speaking. Yahweh, that is, by Shem Shai. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay? This is what this is all about, right here. The beginning and the end. All right? This is the end right here. This is where it started. This is where it ends right here. And we are in it. And we're going to see the signs to come. And that's what it is. Back to scripture. And Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun. And in the moon. And in the stars. And upon the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. We are seeing this people. And it's going to get even worse after 
this next eclipse. You're going to see these things right here. Okay. Now, we're just going to read down to where we started at, but we're going to start here in uh, Luke 21, 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. Now, this particular thing where and they shall fall by the sword happen to our ancestors okay here's the deal it says here and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled well guess what that happened to our ancestors and those Gentiles are over there in our land right now being trodden down Okay, it's almost time for the Gentiles time to be fulfilled. Okay, that's what that all boils down to. We are in this time right now, people. Okay, so look forth to verse 25 and then we're going to just read it right here. Verse 26, men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the power of heaven shall be shaken. Alright. The things that are coming up on this earth. For those of you that's been with me for a while. I've, I've shown you some very, very foreboding looking spirits. You understand what I'm saying? The government is in unison with these evil demonic spirits. And they are making bodies for these spirits. If you understand what I'm saying. Uh, we're going to go into that. I'm, I'm going to put a lesson together about that particular thing right there when it comes to what's coming up on this earth and men are going to see and drop dead with a heart attack for fear. Basically, that's what that that uh, verse 26 really uh, describes there. Okay, let's go over here in Exodus right here for eight and it reads and it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter signs okay the most high sent uh, Jonah to Nineveh you understand and they were told what it's gonna be and they didn't believe him you know it, it seems like over the history of time for every real prophet that the Most High raised up to go and warn the people, the people did not want it to accept what that prophet was saying. But now we have no other choice because the signs of what those prophets told us, we are seeing right now and going to keep seeing until the Most High, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, come back to claim this earth and set things right. Let's go over here in Matthew 24, 29. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking himself. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. We are going to get a glimpse of this happening on April 8th the next solar eclipse and the things are go that's going to follow it okay these things will follow it you better believe it will this is no joke right here we are being warned people for a lot of you that don't want to take you know a uh, heed to what the most high word is saying to you maybe this is just not for you maybe you slated for destruction 
We cannot stop what is coming. But the Most High has given us the time to repent because these scriptures will fulfill itself as they so have been. Again, I implore you to hear what I'm saying. Turn away from your wicked ways and just repent and accept Yahweh Shai. Accept him. Because if you don't, well, like I said, you will be destroyed with the devil and his angels. You will. I can assure you, you will. Now, let's go over here in Matthew 12, 39. Um, it says here, but he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign and there shall no sign be given to, the, to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, okay? Jonas was a prophet, okay? Jonas was a hard-head prophet. Jonas was instructed to go to Nineveh and warn Nineveh because they were this evil and adulterous generation right here that the Most High wanted to warn through the prophet Jonah. Jonah did not want to go Jonah dragged his foot about it, and Jonah wind up getting shipwrecked, getting knocked off of a ship, and fell into the sea where this big sperm whale, some kind of monstrous looking whale, swallowed him up and took him to Nineveh and vomited him up onto the shores of Nineveh to do what the Most High told him to do in the first place. He could have went a better way, but he didn't want to listen. See, this is why it is important. If the Most High instruct you to do something, you better do it because you are going to do it one way or the other. I wouldn't want to have to be swallowed up by no nasty well and be down in his guts or back at the, at the back of his throat. You understand what I mean? For him to carry me somewhere. That was a miracle in itself that he didn't get, you know what I mean, uh, then he didn't die in the well you know what I'm saying no oxygen no nothing it's just crazy but if this word says that's what happened guess what it happened alright see but uh, let's let's go over here in uh, Jonah verse uh, 1 and 2 arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me. This is what the Most High told Jonah. Okay? This is what, you know, uh, 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 he told him. So, we're just going to go. I'm kind of in a hurry, people. But we're going to get to the meat of this whole situation is what I'm saying. Okay? We're going to go over here in uh, chapter 3. And we're going to read this from uh, chapter 3, verse 1 on down to 10. Okay? Still dealing with Jonah in Nineveh. Okay? Verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it, preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh according to to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Okay. So the people of Nineveh believed Yahweh and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them for word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything let them not feed nor drink water 
So Nineveh trying to get ready for, and they, they took to heart what the Most High said, and they, they're going on a fast here, okay? We can learn from this right here. Every now and again, in these end times, what we need to do, start fasting, start praying more. You can go one day without any food. You understand what I mean? Even if it's a water fast or something, do something. You understand what I mean? Dedicate it to the Most High. Show him that you're serious about the word that he's given you. You see, show him that you're serious and you're taking it to heart right here. That's part of your repentance as well. That shows belief and trust right there. Goes a long way. Verse 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto Yahweh. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if Yahweh would turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And Yahweh saw their works that they turned from their evil way and Yahweh repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them and he did it not. Okay? So guess what? The people of Nineveh hearkened to the words of the Most High that he gave Jonah to give them. And he didn't. the Most High didn't destroy them. But you know what? That's not going to be so here in this day and time for us. You understand what I mean? Because a lot of us ain't going to make it and we know it. We know it. And that's just what it is. Now it is also said that, uh, let me see. Yeah. After that, this, this eclipse on the, um, the 8th, of next month after it takes place these are all of the states that is going to affect most and I'm right here in Indiana you know what I mean uh, or what have you now they're saying that it's going to be America's cicadas apocalypse two groups of emerging first time since 1803 I saw this article right here I saw this article right here so it's going to be these bugs, these cicadas coming up out of nowhere. You understand? This right here is reference to the end times back in Egypt when the Most High sent those locusts. You see what I'm saying? That's what this boils down to. And here we are again, here in these times. Locust. You understand? See, these are all of the, the, the states, you know, that it's going to affect right here in the red. You see, this ain't no joke, people. And a lot of these states right here, even Texas, do you not know? I saw a chart, but uh, I went back to go and get it and it wasn't around. Do you know that some of these states, and especially Michigan, it's called Little Egypt, and some of them are even called Nineveh? Nineveh, that's right. And that when that um, eclipse come, these states are going to feel the effects even more. You're going to be able to see them. So that's what it is. I, look, I liken this right here to the most high doing the most warning to this right, these states right here. You want to know the truth? I could be wrong. I don't know. But the main thing is repent. It's time. It is more than time right here because the X has been drawn over this earth, over this map, the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. That's all I got on this one, people. I hope you found the lesson edifying. I hope I said something to stimulate spiritual growth. All praise to the Father, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim Rakadash. People, please remember to live your life as though we are being watched simply because we are. This is James, and I'm out. Peace.